You're listening to the World Famous White Roof Radio with cast number 676, recorded on Tuesday, October 26, 2021. No sponsor this time, just DB and Gabe. For those of you playing the Wire Radio home game, you already know that Gabe and I spent a day at the BMW Performance Center in Thermal, California for BMW Mini Test Fest. We drove a bunch of BMWs, and I took the opportunity to drive a bunch of Minis. And as a special bonus, we were able to interview Mike Payton, who is the Chief Motorer and Vice President of Mini of the Americas, and of course, friend of the show, Pat McKenna, Head of Marketing, Product, Events, and Strategy at Mini USA. If you weren't playing the home game, Gabe and I posted a bunch of photos on Instagram over at White Roof Radio, Motoring File, and the Bimmer File accounts. Keep an eye on MotoringFile.com and BimmerFile.com for Gabe's thoughts on the cars he drove, and pay attention to the next episode of White Roof Radio. We're going to talk way more about this event. And a quick note, anytime you actually hear me say 2021, imagine I'm actually saying 2022. Got it? Cool. Let's get to it. Thanks. Yeah. I recorded this guy on the motorcycle. Is that a BMW bike? No. Yeah. Oh, good. I'm glad I got it. Uh, the DB Gabe were driving a ridiculous car, a 5 Series CS through Box Canyon, and we were just amazed at this car. I'll pick up that because, sound, you know, but... because of that, I don't know if you guys heard that or not, but it was, it's ridiculous. It, it is ridiculous. The whole thing is 627 horsepower, $142,000 gets you performance that doesn't make any sense outside of an electric car. It's a five series. It's a five series. It's got four seats, four <laughs> quad carbon buckets. Carbon buckets, carbon fiber bucket four seats. Of them. What the what the uh, what the frack? And it is a, a car that is so easy to drive fast. It's so um, it's so capable, yet it's extremely composed. I mean it's yeah, I mean at the end of the day it's still a five series and you're just kinda of going, oh, okay. Car's just going, whatever, that's fine. Yeah. Construction action, little construction over here. Um, but yeah, it's 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 a really incredible vehicle, and I'm I'm I've I've, I've read many people talk uh, talk about it in glowing terms over the past year, and this is my first time behind the wheel, probably my only time. This car's very limited, so the chances of me driving it again are, are slim to none, which is why we took it to Box Canyon. We really wanted to. Oh, you make DB car sick, dude. Yeah, that's all. That's all. That was down. that was a lot of miles an hour. Does it feel like the Jawas are about to come out? Does it feel like what? Jawas from Star Wars. Yes, it does. That's where we're at. You guys have to check out the pictures on the Instagram. I know we're Mini Cooper stuff, but you know what? This car is pretty dope. I got a car behind me that is uh, wanting to get by, so I'm gonna pull off. Oh yeah. Give him some space. Give him some I, space. I know, DB, you're also not feeling great. Yeah, we'll get back so, on the straight roads in a minute. Yeah. I don't want to ruin the drive for you. Yeah, that's all good. And we're going to go drive some minis here in a little bit, too. And um, maybe I'll drive an X3. Why not? It's fine. Anyway, check back. Just just a quick update from the 5 Series. Uh, DB hasn't barfed yet. And Gabe, what was our, MG, our current MPG? Uh, MPG is uh, pegged at 8.5. 8, 8.5. So let's, um, not, I, let's not do the math on that. So that's pretty good. So high fives all around. Yes, that's boom, done. There we go. All right, so we are just finished lunch, hanging out at BMW Performance Center. Uh, just processed a bunch of photos. Gabe's still working on it. And Pat's going to say a few words here in a few minutes. It'll be fun to watch. And then I think we're going to go take an electric mini out. At least I want to. And Gabe's going to go drive another well, ridiculous BMW. The big news. Oh, uh, God. We haven't put this the, yet. The biggest news, of this course. This isn't is the that. biggest news. There's an autocross <laughs> course set up for the electric minis and i did it and it was a lot of fun those cars we'll talk more about on the show, actual show um but so gabe went out in the electric car right, autocross course very quick 26 four fastest time all right now my turn is db i'm in a 2021 jcw hard top and this car has all the things uh, driving around in sport mode and it's you know it's like driving a mini just driving a mini that it's really fast um this one there's no throttle lag when you get on the gas like there is with the r cars that i had before with the automatic uh it shifts really tight and really crisp it's really nice and it makes 
a really fun sound. Let's see if we can get any of this. Here we go. Also, that was 60 miles an hour, so pretty quick. Um, enjoying this a lot. Stay tuned. We still have more stuff from the BMW Performance Center in Thermal, California. All right, so DB again, uh, still at BMW Performance Center. As you can tell, it's recording with my iPhone. We just finished a really great interview with Pat McKenna and Mike Payton. Super awesome. Those guys took half hour, talked, asked questions, and it was right. Anyway, uh, I'm driving what I think might be my last car of the day, and this is the 2021 Cooper. And this one, ta-da, has a manual transmission. Very excited. I'm just now pulling out, and uh, we're gonna go row some. We're gonna row some gears in the Justa. Ugh. God, that just sounds bad, and it tastes funny coming out of my mouth. How do you guys say that? I even opened the sunroof just you know because I got it. Anyway, right, DB back in the uh, Mini Cooper. The Cooper. And poking around and looking and. Checking things out. This car doesn't have a sport button, which I find odd. But I also find this car drives quite nice and it makes a good sound. And everything that you liked about the R50, where third gear was like you know overdrive you could really just rev it out and in doing so made it go faster in a fun way that was lost i think a little bit in the r56 cooper and it's all back all of it and it is it is charming i'm not gonna lie this car is a delight to drive manual transmission and this is it's like driving a Mini. That's all there's to it. Super nice. But this one happens to have all the bells and whistles, which I think is probably a little ridiculous. It's got the, I don't know, it's got the really nice touch screen, which is cool. And all the digital speedo and that screen, which everything's got now, which is very nice, very easy to read. Uh, it's got a sunroof, which I drove with open for about a minute. And then closed it, because, well, it's a sunroof. Oh yeah, second gear to, rev to redline is roughly 65 miles an hour. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah, good job, guys. This is, uh, I, don't know, I, I seem to have remember that I drove an F56 uh, Mini Cooper during one of the Mini Takes the States. I don't remember it being this, I don't remember it being this experience. I remember the experience being much more subdued than this. And this is definitely better. 2021 uh, DB, uh, Mini We've been talking all day. We're out at the Performance Center, uh, BMW Performance Center, Thermal, uh, California. Uh, joined today by uh, Mike and Pat. This is totally awesome. They're going to talk to us. Yeah, so I think it's it's an exciting time. We've talked to individually each of you yep. a couple times. I think actually we did have you. Is this cross examination? Oh, we've talked. Yeah, about, this there's, is a while ago though. There's going like, to be. Yeah, there's this is actually at the last Performance Center. That's exactly right. Yeah, there's two and a half years, two years ago. About we, yeah, right after we've came actually on board. last time we talked to Pat, both of us had hair. We are yeah. going to talk a little. <laughs> yeah, we, we're, we're going to bring up some some things in the past. Uh -oh. and then we're, <laughs> they're going to ask how we feel. Uh, no, but it is obviously a pleasure to to talk to you guys. You know, on such a beautiful sunny Southern California day. Um, awesome. We've got a ton of minis out there. We've got classics. We've got autocross uh with just the electric mini which oh, so by the awesome. way we just did so awesome. a lot of fantastic um yeah. i had the fastest time deleted due to track limits which i'm a little gabe, limits. gabe couldn't mean? manage to stop in the box i, I was six uh, inches out you were 12 oh, inches out i was six oh, inches 12 out 12 inches and the i box was, was too small. i was a half second faster than anybody else so okay. it's it burns so but anyway right, it's, now he's two and a half so seconds my, this, this whole court's out of order yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> Back to the point here. It is a pleasure talking with both of you. Um, you know, Mike, you've you've uh, you've come in over the past what? Has it been two years? Just now? over two years. Yeah, two, two years, years July. Now. Yeah. And you have had a, a wild ride. It has been. <laughs> it was, yeah. 
right? know, obviously nothing that you could have foreseen. Um, and you are in standing a good way. here today, and we are looking at it seems to be a favorable sort of a, a bit of a you know sun on the horizon here in terms yeah. of the brand and you know dealers being fairly healthy, et cetera. Absolutely, yeah. It's uh, I remember when I first came on board, I used to get all the questions about Mike. Oh my gosh, it's uh, what's it like managing a small car brand and, in a truck and SUV world? And now, you know, fast forward, and I mean, the industry has changed so much in the past two years. Uh, you look back, you know, when I started in 2019, and you know, dealers were definitely feeling some of the pressures mm-hmm. of just where they currently were and you know some prior investments and you know, the volumes having you know been adjusted down uh, a few different times now we've got a network that is really on par with what we're seeing around the world from being more sustainable and mm-hmm. in a good place and you know expenses under control we're selling minis like crazy mm-hmm. demand is incredible pat pat and team have really been working on you know how we're you know, investing a lot of our marketing dollars just to get the word out there and generating brand awareness. And that's put many kind of high, higher on the consideration list because it was always making sure that many's on people's shopping lists. Mm-hmm. And, and that has changed so much over COVID. It's changed so much this year. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah, it's amazing what a uh, global pandemic and a uh, global s- semiconductor shortage <laughs> will, will do to just – Get you thinking and yeah. looking at the business differently, and that and that leads to my my follow up, which is wh- what I mean. So much has changed, obviously. So much has imp- been impacted, but what are some of the surprises that you've seen with coming through COVID and obviously the chip shortage, et cetera? Um, maybe in terms of sales, in terms of interactions with customers, et cetera. Yeah, I mean, uh, one be interesting to see what your perspective is on this too. But I I would say one surprise is um, how positive the business effects have been Mm -hmm. for us for our dealers uh it's been interesting too that even with short short supply we have customers i mean a lot of our pipeline is pre-sold coming in customers are ordering their minis Mm -hmm. and they're getting exactly what they want right so it's actually Mm -hmm. kind of working out for the customers too and while the environment overall in the industry mini is no exception that you know, there's not a lot of negotiating and haggling right now because the supply chain is so limited. Mm-hmm. But that also is more of a relief, I think, when people mm-hmm. are you know going and, and buying their mini because mm-hmm. they don't have to just do kind the, of a level playing field. They don't right? have You're to do the part that they focusing hate about on the going car. To buy yeah. and that's why I hate buying cars. Is I don't like to do the game. Yeah, that's why. Mm-hmm. Go sell me a car and I'll leave. Thank you. That's all I want to do. And you know, it's interesting that I mean. I, on so many on so many fronts like mini electric you know you were out there on yeah. the autocross right great car and since we started taking pre-orders in december of 19 and we launched that in march of 20 right like right, right when the pandemic was hitting i mean pretty much every one of those cars has had a reservation on it or been pre-sold and now this this month of october here we are at our, I think it'll end up being our highest reservation month since we wow. started the system back in December 2019, which shows you just in the past two years, a focus on electric, mm-hmm. focus on mini electric <clears throat> has been just incredible. Mm-hmm. So really, really good. So really I don't know is. if you have anything to add to that, but it's... Well, I think coming awesome. back to just the whole demand side, you know, when you go through a pandemic as a business, you... There are people in the company that really look at, okay, is there's someone who plans a, a negative outlook, there's, there's a positive, and there's somewhere in the middle. And there were some forecasts that were actually pretty scary. Mm-hmm. But the, the thing that I kept thinking was, you know, like everyone else, we were locked down. And that, to me, meant there's pent-up demand for just getting out and living mm-hmm. life. And for this brand that's so much about fun to drive and it's an experience and it's the community, I'm just thrilled to see us in a situation where, as Mike said, we're selling 50, 60, in some places 80% into the pipeline. Mm -hmm. That means all these cars are being custom ordered, which means people are getting exactly what they want. That sounds like the 2003 days. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, that's what a lot of this harkens back to. Mm-hmm. Oh, nice. And our, I would say our community efforts are kind of at, at a peak right mm-hmm. now. 
And I think, again, people are starved for, for this getting back either virtually or in mm -hmm. person and just, you know, and that's the real beauty of this brand uh, is, is the community. Well, and you heard, you heard Pat mention this earlier today. I mean, you take Mini Electric and 80% of those customers are new to Mini. That's incredible. That's a huge thing. And, that's, just and huge. that's something that's been really <clears throat> important too is kind of getting more and more people to kind of mm -hmm. know the fun of Mini and, and mm -hmm. the go-kart handling and all of that and the community aspect. Mm -hmm. And so now... You, this is their their first entry mm -hmm. into Mini, and so on one hand, we want you know we wanted to make sure that car was competitively priced, but you know attractively equipped and mm -hmm. so on. Uh, but then, in and of itself, it is a Mini. Yeah, you right. know, you go out and look, and maybe from afar, you might not be able to tell right. if right. that is that an electric or not. And that was you know very intentional as well. Of oh, those eighty percent, what's the has there is that a different customer? Are you seeing different people entering the brand? Yeah, you might know number? that better than me. Yeah, we're still we're still looking at what what makes them different and kind of are there identifiers mm -hmm. for them. But what what's interesting to us is an E V buyer is they're looking for the powertrain first mm -hmm. and then and then many in in the way they initially look at it, many is <clears> somewhat <throat> secondary. So that's why we're in uh, places like there's something called Electrify Expo. So these are mm -hmm. like electric test drive events. And this is where we're really capitalizing on the fact these are people who are interested in electric. Mm -hmm. They're probably curious about electric. But our message there is like this is the most fun to drive mm -hmm. electric. This is the best small electric car. Mm -hmm. So we're right there with our superlatives because we're super <laughs> proud of, yeah. of what we bring to the table. Yeah. yeah. Well, and also it's better looking than all the other electric cars i mean honestly the nissan yeah. leaf who, we think who, so who too. thinks that's a good idea <laughs> oh we're biased but we agree uh, <laughs> right? we're in yeah, violent, violent agreement violent yeah. agreement here <laughs> yeah so uh, i want to pivot slightly since we're talking about product and you know you we obviously just heard your presentation uh, about various aspects of, of where mini's at right now and and obviously this is the first there's been a clear announcement from munich and from from you and from mm -hmm. well, everybody at Mini that this will ultimately be an electric brand at mm -hmm. some point. Um, we know that there's a transition period which has already started with with the current car out there. For sure. Yep. What else, without divulging obviously anything that you won't divulge anyway, but what what else can we look <laughs> forward to in the next few years as as a Mini enthusiast, but maybe somebody who's curious about electric cars who you don't want to leave the brand to go get a Model Three or something else. I yeah. mean, is there something that they should be looking at, looking forward to from the brand. Yeah, I mean, you want to. I, I think with that? the. I mean, the way it's been for years with Mini, you have kind of two bookends or cornerstones, right? You have the hard top, the iconic Mini, and you have the Countryman, which, like, literally, really transformed Mini. You know, at the end of 2010, because of four doors, all-wheel drive, mm -hmm. it it literally opened up like new segments yeah. for yeah. us, and. Uh, when we look at these two bookends, we clearly have the, the Bev today and the mm -hmm. hardtop. You know, I think the Countryman would be a logical step in the future. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's where I think we have really flexible architecture within the group, where mm -hmm. I think the theme within the larger company is this idea of the power of choice, so mm -hmm. to being able to have different options and then what you were describing before, which is this electrification in the future, this is still ten years out. Mm -hmm. You know, so ten years is a right. ten mm -hmm. years is a long time. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Uh, so I think I think we're going to maintain as much flexibility mm -hmm. as possible. I mean, that's an extraordinarily safe, but I appreciate that. <laughs> yes, uh, I it's, I predict that many will have. Uh, electric countrymen at some point at some in the point. in the next uh, some 10, years, 15, but twenty sometime. So, but I, mean, I think it's what I think it's interesting though, in in and not to. I mean, I think that's a you know I appreciate that um, that response because I, I think it's clear you know where the market share is from a mini enthusiast and as many mini enthusiasts have recognized is that small hatch can only go so far in your life if it's, if it's your only car. Sure. Uh, if right. you've got a, a young family or you're thinking about that, you know you want to stay in the in the mini family. Um, that's the logical choice. And it's interesting coming off of driving those cars on yes. the autocross and having spent time in the ES, you start to realize, you start to really kind of rethink, have we been doing it wrong for a while now? Because this, that electric car and others that I've driven within only the BMW group, by the way, of course. Yeah, um, of course. 
are really mind bending though, in terms of the type of experience you have as a consumer, especially as a daily driver. Mm -hmm. And I think it's the more, and at least this is my opinion, the more people you get seat time in that car, I think the more people that will frankly be shocked at the experience. For sure. I mean, that's, that's why, and we've been engaging with, you know, the UDEs on the BMW Mm -hmm. side Mm -hmm. to get people in some mini electrics for, for sure. That was, that's one opportunity. Pat Mm -hmm. mentioned, you know, this, uh, Electrify Expo. Expo that you know we've had a couple different um, examples there, which is also getting some demo opportunities. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, yeah, but the challenge is at the dealer level, yeah. and and they very much want this. They've been asking us for this. It's like, hey, can we can we have some you know cars to demo? The problem is, it's like everything's sold. They're sold, yeah, right. And so we're trying to find that <clears throat> balance because for sure, if, if people had an opportunity to drive it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and anytime we've we've been able to do that with cars, the limited number of cars we have available, um, it's definitely a good thing. But mm-hmm. for sure, when you would you you know you initially, I think go back even two years ago, when people were thinking about electrification, it was either a luxury thing mm-hmm. or it was like I'm compromising. Mm-hmm. And right. I think that's the really cool thing about yeah. kind of how we're looking at it and certainly with the mini electric even the even the countryman p hub that's out there mm-hmm. today is it, it shouldn't be a compromise it mm-hmm. should still be fun to drive it should still be like your normal car and and so i think that was one thing that was really achieved with uh with the mini electric mm-hmm. today and then so going forward in the future everything that we look at going towards being an electrified brand it has to be a mini. It has to deliver on the driving characteristics. It has to deliver on that, you know, creative use mm-hmm. of space and such. So, and I think that's that's cool because you have some some companies may bring on an electric car, and it's it's this unique, mm-hmm. different car that's like, how does that really fit with with the brand? Yeah. Where there's no <clears throat> mistaking, and I don't think there will be any mistaking. Yeah in the no, future so with what we're doing that mm-hmm. it's it's a mini mm-hmm. yeah. uh, so. i've not driven an electric car until today i'm i'm not uh, really? even lying really? at all it's my no it was a big it was a, and the first time you will always remember it was on a racetrack it was on a racetrack at that so with the full regen or the low regen? oh i went max regen okay yeah. Yeah. if you go out there on too. low regen it, it'll be which is a, a different, different experience, experience and i'm still going to go do that all right uh, but that's my first experience in an electric car i've never done it and i've got Ever. plenty of never never wow. driven an electric i mean golf, golf carts but those don't count <laughs> I've got my fair share of uh, MTTS autocross time and regular autocross time and track time, and even out there today, uh, driving around Gabe in that uh, M5 CS. Oh my God! Yes, <laughs> that Mini, dare I say, had better acceleration than the JCW because I took that out on the streets too, mm-hmm. and I couldn't. There was a, a marked difference. It was an amazing experience. I wouldn't ha- think twice about having that car in my garage. Yeah. There's just like, oh, this is a Mini. Of course, this drives exactly like a Mini. Why would I not have this car? Mm-hmm. Oh, I don't have to put gas in it. That's why I don't have to have, that's why I'm going to have this car. There you it's go. It's perfect. And the, the, numbers, awesome. the numbers don't do it justice because what you're describing is almost like an additional line item in yep. a comparison. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's, the, because, it's the butt dyno. Because if you, because if you, because if, yeah, the butt dyno, yeah, the that's butt actually dino. the specification. Yeah. Can, we, can, we, can we quantify the butt dyno in some way? Uh, I've got I'm a gonna, spreadsheet somewhere. Just I'm going to gonna call your up and I'm going to say the new specification is called butt dyno. Butt dyno. And yes. I'll give you a uh, copyright on that. <laughs> uh, intellectual that. property. No, but I think when you look at the numbers, the zero to 60 time, things like that, it doesn't really uh, convey mm-hmm. right. this visceral feeling you get when you're in that seat and just this pull, this instant power yeah. that just makes you giddy. It makes not, you just Not only the like, instant power, it is instant. That's the but key. with full regen, the oh, yeah. instant oh, yeah. stop it. Oh, yeah. You don't need brakes. You don't need brakes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just, one, one, you're like, one, oh, wait yeah. a minute. I have to one rethink the way yeah. I drive. One yeah. pedal drive. But that, right? And that was yeah. even on the autocross. Now, board. what's cool with that, so, you know, and not, and not that this is like, you know, earth shattering technology, but it is, you, you said one pedal drive. Yeah. And it is almost like, you know, driving a go kart. If you were to drive it that way, the brake lights do come on when the car oh, is. Do they really? Oh, yeah. I didn't even yeah. see that. Yeah. So, so because that that's always a question. It's like, Wow, I'm driving around. I don't even need, even need the brake at all. So 
that because of that reason, oh. there is some inertial sensor sensors in there at all. So as soon it as just, you let off the gas, it comes on. The brake oh. lights will come on, so you're not like does. freaking people out when you're driving. So of course I, it does. I'm going to pivot a little <laughs> bit, but I mean, I think it's fair to say, like, like like I mentioned before, that you know the experience I've had and a lot of people had with yeah. that car is is kind of a revelation in some ways, yeah. and you start to really question, well, why have we been putting you know, why, yeah, why dead dinosaurs we, in our in our cars. Why am I still putting for this gas in our many years? car that right now, in fact, spends more time in the garage than ever has ever, especially yeah. for me. Yeah. I used to go, you know, yeah, I'm that's driving a good point 150 too. miles a People week who are working to driving home. 10 yeah. or 15. So, but for for those listening right now who yes. are who are holding on to their to their shift knob and their foot <laughs> on the clutch and they are like hey, hey. come and take it okay now Pat I, McKenna, I ride, come and take it i ride with those guys we too, love you so. guys too yeah I'm, and so for those guys and listen i'm a card carrying member i i fully will admit i love a, a, a manual transmission Just watch your step pressure how do we you know how how do we feel about the next 10 years i mean do we have does somebody like me who i love electric cars but i'm not quite there yet where is there a future for me with with many yeah so one it's not going to be a light switch mm-hmm. right okay. it's not like all of a sudden we're going to get to 2030 and you know there's going to be none of the things you're familiar with mm-hmm. and and just all all the future i think there will be a balance of that uh so you know we will have internal combustion cars in our lineup for for a while mm-hmm. Uh, and we also need to be careful too about the U.S. market specifically. That you know, if you look at like the the globe around there, certainly Europe is sprinting towards electrification, and China you could you mm-hmm. could put that in there as well. You know, some other parts of Asia and definitely the U.S. You know, there's this question of well, is it is the tipping point in 2030? Is it 2040? Mm-hmm. That I think is going to be kind of you know see how that plays out. So mm-hmm. we want to make sure that we we've, we've got a little bit of runway left. You know, to make sure all those things people will expect from us from an internal combustion standpoint are still mm-hmm. there and John Cooper works and all that. But then, you know, when we start to look at, so t- take example of the um, uh, the pace setter that we use for the safety mm-hmm. car oh, in wow. Formula One um, or Formula E this year. And that can give you a really good indication of, you know, what can we do? with John Cooper works mm-hmm, mm-hmm. as well if right. that were electrified. Mm-hmm. And I think you'll start to see more and more of that develop. And, you know, when you start to to develop, you know, larger battery capacities mm-hmm. and ranges get to be more mm-hmm. of a thing, but back to the fact of staying true to the fact that it's a Mini, mm-hmm. right? You should, you should never get into, you know, uh, a Mini and feel like, well, this is kind of foreign to me or mm-hmm. does, this have, does this have the performance characteristics I'm looking for mm-hmm. um, those I think will all be there in the future and I think with uh, you know having seen kind of what's around the corner um, I think people will be really excited about nice. keeping true to what Mini's all about mm-hmm. and kind of the, the legacy and our heritage mm-hmm. and all that but then also you know sticking with how do we continue to kind of modernize and be relevant to how the world is, is developing. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think people will be really happy with how the brand evolves in that regard. Nice. All right. I feel, I feel better. I th- hopefully everybody now can let go of their shift <laughs> knobs. And they're good. They, can, they can rest a little bit. Got to have the shift knob, man. Yeah. A little bit of hey, we've been driving some classic minis out there. Dude. Yeah. We can yeah, still hang that. on to their minis. Uh, so well, like, and, that's, and that's the other thing I was going to bring up, too. And I, I two more topics, but I don't want to look like you had something to ask as well. I, I just wanted to touch up, like, one of, to, when we start getting back into actually talking about gasoline-powered cars again, Todd had a question about JCW, so I wanted to throw that out there. Go ahead. Go ahead. So our man Todd, who couldn't yeah. be with us today because he's going to SEMA next week. He, of nice. course, he has to ask, being the recent purchaser of two new jcws that are going to be arriving for the end of the year wow he wants to know if there's going to be a horsepower boost on the jcws before they start going electric like on the petrol power cars are we going to see those get any any more juice any more horsepower we we don't have any horsepower changes for uh for years to come there you go todd there's yeah. one yeah scratch, yeah. scratch it out <laughs> scratch that one off and i'll always go back to uh this this uh somewhat old point at this uh at this stage but uh gabe and i have talked about when we went to 301 horsepower that was you know rethinking the suspension the braking the rear axle everything so yes um so that 
that milestone, which wasn't that long ago, mm-hmm, right. is still... Is, is four and a half seconds zero to 69 enough? <laughs> yeah. You know, for me, honestly, I, it's, it's more than enough. Okay. And, and I'm good. I mean, I just drive a Cooper S, and I drive a Cooper if I could, but I, I drive a Cooper S. It's our boy Todd. He Well, right. he drives stoplights, stoplights. So he's also, a, he's, he's making a heavy investment in JCW stock right now, so <laughs> yeah. he just right. wants to make sure that there's... He's taking his bets. Yeah. 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 Rest assured. Yeah. yeah. And then now, his only other question. Now, to that, to that yeah. effect, do you know what he's buying? What JCW is buying? I do. Buying? He's buying a hardtop and a countryman. Nice. Okay, so now the countryman, obviously with 301 horsepower. That's, mm-hmm. He wanted, yeah, he's a hardtop guy, but he also yeah. knows the countryman's a little bit quicker. So. Gotcha. Yeah. Well, that's what I'm driving. So. Yeah, Thank yeah, you, yeah. Todd. There Thank you, you Todd. Yeah, and he also wants to know if we're going to be able to unlock minis in the future with our, with our phones. Oh, that's an like, interesting question. Like, like the BMWs are starting to do and like I'm seeing on TV with other brands. So, because that's actually a really cool. It thing. is. It is pretty cool. That's good. So here's, I'll I'll answer that with a two pronged answer. Which <laughs> perfect. Is, You're really good at those. So we're living in a semiconductor chip shortage. Yep, yep, yep. And I think because minis err on the side of of, you know, being a little simpler. Yeah. We're we only have three issues right now where we have semiconductor chip shortages. So, uh, why we, add why add to that? Well, can I not our, do, can our, I not do that today? So our next generation you, you, cars, That's fair. You from, can. Uh, from yeah, from true. California it, to New Jersey. It, yeah, it, yeah, it yeah, goes yeah. up to space and back. I yes. think that's that's <laughs> that's that's the difference. Problem, it, it is, but it's fair. I'm just and checking. And for those I of use you, that all the time. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, 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 like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You like want to get into your hotel room or my car? Yeah, yeah. Well, again, that was a me question. That was a odd question. But and for the for listeners, Mike's pointing to Mini Connected. The Mini app. The Mini app. Sorry. Yes. Uh, which allows for you to unlock uh, modern minis, which is a fantastic feature. It takes a little, just a so, so when you're takes leaving, a beat or two. It's, it's a few <laughs> seconds. When you're leaving Whole Foods, yeah. you can actually unlock your car from the park from the yes. store. Yeah. Or it's like yes. let's say you went somewhere, you're in a stadium, and you're like, crap, did I lock my car? You can check the status, or you can lock it remotely. Yeah, yeah. Which, which is cool. But I think, I think Todd's actually asking. I know about what the you're whole, talking about. Though. Yeah, that'll be in the next gen and perfect. Yeah. That's good for Todd because it's, that means he's gonna have to buy another car. So that he'll, works. He'll triple down. Next that, time. That'll be the drinking game. Is <laughs> but when he's Todd's just gonna, gonna have to unlock it with his thumb. For with now. his thumb for now. Yeah, like a farm. Really difficult. Yeah, right. Like 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 a yeah. Oh, I have to caveman. Use, I have to use a fob because my 2016 is a super Legera. So I we've, to, we've I, yeah, yeah we've named DB's uh, 2016 uh, super Legera because it has. Manual everything on it, yeah, which is. Uh, I'm which surprised is rarity. it doesn't have roll. This is a, it's crank a, windows. It's a good pivot because actually the last thing I want to chat about <laughs> is yes. and and we chatted about it briefly. You don't know, you don't want to uh, talk about it. Is this sort of? Br- I don't know if you guys have noticed, but I've seen it on Bring a Trailer. I've seen it elsewhere, but the first generation new minis mm. are starting to go up in value. Yeah, some of them They're, are. Not some of them are the ones that were, had been on fire or have no transmission have gone down I've, but i've still seen regular r53s on but the but trailer. nice They're ones still going for like six or but seven nice ones. and like this is how it starts money. the nice yeah. ones start first yeah GPs, what, what GP do you guys ones. think about that i mean do you inside of mini do you look at that and you know see that as an opportunity or do you see are, are you just sort of huh that's great but we're focused on the future uh, where, I didn't think about that. That? my first mini is now coming up on being a classic yeah Oh my yeah, God. Neo. Wow. I mean, because we're next summer, we'll celebrate, yeah. uh, or 20, not even next spring, March. 20, 20 years. Yeah, 20 March years. 21st. Yeah, oh 20, 20 years in America. Yeah. Wow. And America. I think there's America, there's great, I think great opportunities in the first generation cars, R50, R53, uh, just in terms of, you know, some of the custom builders, mm-hmm. the resto mod builders that we've seen out there. And I think it's a chance to kind of reimagine the car. Like it could be, you know, changing seat coverings mm-hmm. and changing color schemes and things like that and doing like proper restorations as well. Mm-hmm. So I think it's also an opportunity because uh, I think the the owner community, every time we're together is always saying, when is a smaller mini coming? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And... The, the answer is always, you know, it's really, and, and no one likes this answer, but the reality is it's, it's challenging to really come out with a smaller car when safety regulations are getting, you know, you know they're changing all the time. And, and also me and that person are the only ones that actually want a smaller car. <laughs> or we'll pay for it. Probably. Or we'll pay for it. Exactly. But so. that, that first gen 
uh, there it is. mini is really, I think it fits that perfectly. But I think there, I would love to see people not just restore them, but restore and kind of reimagine mm-hmm. what they look like. And I think that's, that's good for the whole brand. Mm-hmm. I think yeah. it'd be interesting to see who is buying them. Mm-hmm. I mean, we just talked about the fact that we've got, you know, 80% of people that are new to the brand buying the Mini Electric. Mm-hmm. Well, I don't sure know. It's kind of like mm-hmm. driving some of the classics out here today. I'm like, damn, I want to go buy one of those. Yeah, so are, there yeah. people, are there more people that are getting yeah. tuned into Mini? Are new to the brand? Yeah. Or new to the or brand, new. getting on their radar screen or, or reinvigorated mm-hmm. about it to say, okay, well, now now let me learn more about this mm-hmm. and then does that start to create some yeah some interest i don't know yeah, we'll see other... closer attention i've been getting back into the hood rat car show scene a little bit <laughs> and the old minis aren't showing up yet but the toyota curls without bumpers and the big drift e-brake handles are there oh, gosh. so i'm waiting well, for the, the minis with a lot oh those are the hood rat car shows dude. that's a that's a different car show it's a whole different <laughs> car show around. but i'm not seeing i'm not seeing minis there yet except yeah. for mine and i just the see I the, the bat prices and you can look yeah. and it's all it's all there it's, they're, it's, they're it's, going up for they're, sure they're, yeah. and i also see so there's that there's the pristine people who are throwing down 16 18 20 grand for just a cooper s Right. Yes. That's just got did see fairly that. low miles. Yep. Um, then there's also the folks who are like just totally modding out their cars and all that. I think what we're talking about is something a little bit different. But we're seeing that in other places. I mean, mm-hmm. other automakers are leaning into that concept, at yeah. least, you know, sort of, at least, I don't know if they're supporting it, but they're sort of, you know, blessing certain aspects of it, which is really interesting. Yeah. I'm but, sure there's also a lot of people who work in parts departments right now who are like, so when are you going to start making X, Y, and Z again? Right. Because they can't get it for their R50 customers or something right. like that which is another yeah. podcast but yeah so there's some of the and logistics yeah. that would have to be worked out <laughs> now, now that i start thinking about that i'm going back 20 years i'm going you know what i haven't seen is i haven't seen a market for like the old pt cruisers or you don't you don't <laughs> see people out there going oh hey i'm gonna buy me a 2002 well they're, Chevy the, Malibu. that's because they're, they're really all they're all it. in the ground God, there was demand for that car somewhere outside of the U.S. No, uh, oh, no. I think oh, there was no. more. They foisted it on them. No, 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 no. <laughs> so, no. Oh, there you go, right there. Ninety-six thousand miles. That's not bad. But for, I think for nine grand, I put two, the three thousand five on mine. So, but it's interesting because we have three hundred five thousand. Uh, we have dealers that are very short on supply. There's a shortage of even used cars, as everyone knows. Now would be the perfect time. To really explore, mm-hmm. hey, what could what could a you know a that first a- gen mini restoration look like? Like now's the time mm-hmm. to really play with it. So yeah. I love your question. All but, right, well, that, that, I, I, there's, there's anytime, a business waiting to happen right there. We anytime Pat decide. says he loves my question, I think that's when we always end it. <laughs> oh yes, <laughs> okay, perfect. Then we're done. Bye. Thanks. Uh, I'm just kidding. <laughs> So thank you again. Uh, thank you. Appreciate you, you know, obviously being out here. Uh, great to talk to you guys. Likewise. And we'll probably see you guys at MTTS. I'm, I'm 100%. Guessing. Nice. 100%. Next July 9th, am I so, right? Pat told us. Burlington, uh, Burlington, nine, Vermont. Through the 17th. Through the 17th. <clears throat> yes. All right. So 2022. We will see. Facebook is insanely crazy. all there. About MTTS 2022. We'll, we'll a lot of pent few, up demand. We'll yeah. have some guests too. I think uh, our our head of design, Oliver Heimler, is supposed Ooh. to be with oh, us there. Nice. Very Corber, our Globe ahead of Mini, is supposed to be making a trek over. Wow. Very cool. And uh, yeah, so I think it'll be it'll be good. Awesome. Hopefully Fantastic. we have weather like we do today. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, the whole time. Knock on. Yeah. Not, knock on, knock on exactly. whatever this is. Yes. Uh, all right. Well, Thanks, gentlemen. Thanks, all. Thanks, guys. Thank you. See you. Cheers. Okay, let's close this up. Hey, uh, this is it. We're done. Gabe's going to try to get a seat time in a race car. Yes. Hear him? Yes, absolutely. Uh, one of the, uh, probably, I don't know, there's three M3s out there right now from the 2000s, early right. 2010s. Yeah. Some pretty famous cars. So Very cool. Absolutely. Very cool stuff out on the track. You guys will hear it in the background. Gabe's going to try to put some video up of that later. Uh, we had a great day. We got to oh, talk to everybody. Amazing. We got to drive all the cars. DB, uh, you, you had awesome. a, a revelation in a Cooper. I did. I had, I had two revelations in Coopers today. Uh, one was that I've never driven an electric car. Hold on. Look at that. Oh, my God. Oh. Literally in formation. It's so, it is so cool. That's incredible. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, the Cooper, and then I drove the, actually drove a Cooper, a 2021, which I haven't driven the latest iteration of the three-cylinder car and it was amazing it was a purely delightful automobile to drive and they even had one with the manual transmission it was like driving an r50 it's great it is. 
Done and done. There it is. Anyway, this is going to complete our coverage from, from our BMW Performance Center in Thermal, BMW California. Mini Test Fest. Yes, BMW Mini Test Fest. Thanks, guys, for letting us come along. It's been a hoot. Thanks for listening. See you guys later. Bye. Some last second you're copying. Supposed be, you're supposed to be. <laughs> you're supposed to be stopping the noise. <laughs> this is a. Pro- oh, you meant you, you this is a professional start the operation. Noise. Can you hear my eyes roll when uh, I'm the recording? <laughs> right, so yeah, first first question. What do you think of the buy? It, I think it's good. Right, they're, they're, it. they're different. They're different. It's not like overly. It doesn't taste like overly artificial, which is what I was yeah. worried about. It tastes good. The, I, the watermelon I've never seen, and that's what I've been. Uh, I should hope. I think you can actually buy today. this at Whole Foods. You can, right? yeah. you can buy them a lot of places. Yeah. See, yeah. There you go. Just be, we're on. We're ready. Go. All right. Sweet. Go. <laughs>